they're taking the genetic sequence of, of corn, wheat, soybeans, radishes, it doesn't matter, and they're alter, they're, they're taking, well, we can see right here a little weakness. We're going to take that out, and let's find something over here. We're going to put that in. That's what they're doing. And God said, no, you're not supposed to do that. And here we have, here we have human women in the days of Noah, and these, these, these angels, these sons of God, these fourth kingdom people, are mingling themselves with the seed of men. They're adding something else to the genome of mankind. They did it in the days of Noah. I say it's going to happen again. I believe that, but we are seeing the precursors, precursors of it happening right now. Let me use, since I've referenced the Book of Mormon, let me, let me show you what this looks like. Okay? Here is the Old and New Testament of the Holy Bible written by God, and God said, don't add anything to it. It's fine. Leave it the way it is. It's got eternal life in it. If you add anything to it, I'm going to add to you the plagues that are written in this book. So Joe Smith comes along, if that's what his real name was. Joe Smith comes along, and he's got a book now called the Book of Mormon. And it says, another testament of Jesus Christ. One testament, two testaments, that's it. That's our DNA right there. Here's a third one. Just like that. There's something added to this two strands of DNA. It's called a triple helix. We have a video on that, and I'm going to kind of cover some of that material again because I think it's relevant. At the Mormon temple in Salt Lake City, Utah, you what you see with the three spires as you look at it, they represent the Book of Mormon added to the two outer testaments of the Old and New Testament of the Scriptures. That's what those three towers represent. Here's something that's very interesting that I just saw today, kind of going back over this, and I went, oh, look at there. I want to show you a close-up of these three towers at the Mormon Tabernacle in Salt Lake City, Utah. Look what's standing on top of the third tower, the middle one. You know who that is? It's an angel. It is. It's an angel. It's the angel Moroni. What's he doing? What's, what's he got in his hand stuck up to his mouth? Is that a cigarette? Is that a straw? What's he doing? It's blowing a trumpet. As it was in the days of Noah, even so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. And the, one, of, one of the epitomes of that is the Mormon religion adding a third strand to two-strand DNA. Here is, and we, we've seen this before, here is uh, Shiva and Shakti. Let me stop right here. Shiva is the god. He is the angel. Okay? Shakti is the human woman. Shiva and Shakti together are part of what's called the Holy Trinity of Brahmanism or whatever their religion is. Okay? Indian mysticism. Shiva's the male, Shakti's the female. They come together. Notice what Shiva is holding in his hand. He is holding a trident. Notice that the way the trident is, you have the two outer parts and the third part rising up out of them. And that's essentially what you have here with uh, Joe Smith's church, is that you have the third one's always higher. When you go into the Masonic Lodge, you'll see two chairs, smaller chairs on the sides, one great big giant chair in the middle. That's what you see. You'll, a lot of times in old Masonic buildings or even some churches that are fashioned in the ideology of, of Freemasonry, you'll see two smaller doors and one great big door in the middle. Think about it. Okay? So Shiva and Shakti represent the sons of God and the daughters of men coming together, and then there's something rising up out of that, a third strand of DNA. By the way, here, here's, here's, an, here's a word you know something about. Shiva, guess what he was? He was called an avatar. Do you know what avatar is? Avatar is a guy because the gods up here can't come down to earth and whatever. So they send a Shiva. They, sh they send an avatar down because an avatar is the fusion of the human and the gods together. That's what an avatar is. 
are we approaching the days of NOAA right now? Well, here is the Department of Defense program, DARPA, plans avatar surrogate robots. The agency apparently wants to create remotely operated bipedal machines. In other words, we're, we're seeing right now the technology of our world, especially in the Defense Department and in medic medicine, we're seeing in our world the ability to do things with computers, with biology, with genetics that have been un seen on earth before and here the Department of Defense is creating these avatars. they call them avatars what are they they are humanly controlled robots I mean controlled directly by humans they'll be out on the forefront of the battle they'll be the avatar drones flying around they'll be avatar robots walking around and it's the fusion of humans and technology together something added to mankind to make him to make him immortal make them invincible, make them incorruptible. Here is a website called 2045. There is a project going on right now. This is not just some fringe thing. This is everywhere. The 2045 is based upon something that Ray Kurzweil said, and I'll show you that in a little bit. The 2045 project has what's called the Avatar Project Milestones, and they are, they are advancing the cause of bringing about literally the immortality or the godhood of mankind. This particular project here, the 2045 Avatar Project, seeks to, to find a way of taking the conscious, the, the conscience or the consciousness or the soul, literally the soul of every human and putting it into an electronic device so that humans can live forever. Think about it. This is the new age we're getting ourselves into. Remember King Neptune. He holds in his hand what? The trident, the three-strand DNA, the power of the God. Where does, where does King Neptune live? In the seas, represented by the waves and the floods. That's his representation. And he brings, carrying in his hand, the secret to man's immortality, which is his trident. It's his kingly power. One, two, three. Three strands of DNA. Um... Let's bring masonry into this. Morals and, uh, or immorals and dogma here written by uh, um, Albert Pike. When you join the Masonic Lodge, you go through three phases. The first three initiations. It's called the Blue Lodge. And in that Blue Lodge, in that initiation, the first three, one, two, three, in that third initiation, you walk in. You've got what's called a cable toe around your neck. Now, I won't talk about all the aspects of that, but the cable toe specifically requires that it be a rope made out of not one, not two, but three strands. Here's what, here's what Albert Pike said about it. The initiate was invested with a cord of three threads, so twined, think of DNA, as to make three times three called Zenar. Hence comes our cable toe. He was referencing, and this is something I found out today, he was referencing a Hindu mystic initiation given to young boys at three particular times, three particular ages in their youth. Here's what a Zenar is all about. The sacred cord used in the Hindustani initiation which writers on ritualism have compared to the Masonic apron. Between 8 and 15 years of age, every Hindu boy is imperatively required to receive the investiture of the Zenar. The investiture is accompanied by many solemn ceremonies of prayer and sacrifice. After the investiture, the boy is said to have received his second birth. And from that time, a Hindu is called by a name which signifies twice born. Think, think of what baptism represents. It represents a new birth. It represents salvation. And here, here, in, according to Pike, according to Masonry, according to the Hindu religion of Shiva and Shakti and all that stuff, the three-strand cord given to this boy represents initiation. It represents being born again. So there is God's version of born again. There is Satan's version of born again. It all has to do with adding something to his DNA. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, look at here. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You know what Peter's saying here? There's those who are born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. 
there are those who are going to be born again of the corruptible seed. You know what the corruptible seed is? It starts out like this in Genesis chapter 3. Yea, hath God said. Go read that. You'll find out what the devil, the serpent, promised Eve in the Garden of Eden relating to being born again. And so in these religious practices, the cable toe, the, cable toe, the zen are, the trident, they're telling you that we need to add something to man's DNA because it's imperfect. We need to add something to that so he can be a god. So here's another picture of it. Here's what it looks like. It looks like the unfinished pyramid with the addition of the capstone, which is the eye of Horus. Now, I want you to take a close look at this pyramid part. Notice the pyramid is not made of one whole complete stone. Notice the pyramid is made of individual stones that are brought, think about it, they're brought together. They're gathered and laid and built. Uh, Manley Hall in Secret Teachings of All Ages says that there are 72 stones in this pyramid. You know what I think that relates to? In Genesis chapter 10, there are, the, the Bible teaches you about the family bloodlines of Shem, Ham, and Japheth after they came off the ark. When you count the, the family names in here, where the Bible says these are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations and their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. You see, God divided all these nations, first by family line, then he divided them by, by language in Genesis 11, then he divided them geographically because in the days of Peleg, the earth was divided. So God, God divided them three ways, but this pyramid represents, and there are 72 nations here in Genesis 10 that God divided. This pyramid represents the 72 nations gathered together again to bring in a new world, to bring in the, the day of the Antichrist. Wow. Isn't that absolutely, that, that just amazes me how right this Bible is, and this Bible has the answer. You look at this and go, I don't know what it is. You read the scriptures, you go, oh, okay, I know what this is. Because as God is going to gather together his elect, the devil is going to gather together all the nations. Go, go read what happens at the Battle of Armageddon. He gathers them together. The gathering together of all of humanity under the dominion of the Antichrist is what this is all about. And the, and the two strands of your DNA represent the, the two sides of the unfinished pyramid, the two corners there on the bottom. And then you have the addition of strand number three at the top. Here, is, here it is, and I have, I have a picture of it. The picture that you see on the screen is this book. It's my picture. I took it called the Aquarian Conspiracy. You know what you see here? You see the, basically the same thing as the unfinished pyramid. You see the two strands of DNA, and you have a third one at the top. And I can tell you that every chapter in this book has the symbol of, this is called the Triketra at the beginning. And, it's tell, and you know what the title of this book is? Personal and Social Transformation in Our Time. This was written by Marilyn Ferguson, who is, who was, 